Hey, what's good with you guys? This is Ronaldo Hernandez. Uh, today, I'm back with another video uh, called uh, Fixing Sampling Tricep Syndrome Part 3, Addressing Sway Back Posture. Uh, disclaimer, I want to say I'm not a, a medical professional. I'm not a licensed individual. Um, this video is just for educational purposes. Uh, another thing I want to say too is uh, don't forget to like, co like and comment the video and uh, you can also share it too if you want. Um, also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Another thing I want to add too is um, if you uh, want any help, need any guidance, or kind of want to consult with me uh, regarding with this issue, you know, just want to, you know, I don't know, need, you need help with uh, getting on the right path or just even, you know, finding out where to even start with this uh, rehab journey, uh, just email me. Uh, I'll put the that link in the description below, uh, and I also put the uh, link to the articles that I am referring to in this uh, video. So yeah, all right. So I'm gonna just get to it. I brought my notes again too, cause like I said, man, it's a lot of information. To remember this, and but more actually, it's mostly just because I just wanna give you guys the correct information. Just know that I'm not talking out of my bottom end of my body. All right, so. So yeah, let's just get to it. Now, um, now uh, people, uh, if you're watching the part three, I suggest you highly encourage you to watch part one and part two, and as this is all kind of related towards this. Um, uh, so in this video, I'm mostly just discussing the the hip alignment in regards to, um, I guess you say the structural pathology seen with uh, sapping tricep syndrome. Uh, I already discussed about some of the neuropathy issues and um, kind of, you could say, uh, nerve entrapment uh, points in the body that is, found, is most likely causing sapping tricep syndrome. And I discussed about uh, psoriasis gallus syndrome, which is another structural pathology that is, um, it's kind of, uh, you could say, is is the main culprit for sapping tricep syndrome, but um, see, this is the thing. Most people who have thoracic outlet syndrome most likely also have sway back posture too. So it's a, it's another issue that you have to, um, also deal with. Alright, so I'm gonna just, yeah, I'm just read this off. So according to, uh, to the article that I'm referring, that I'm referring to, a yeah, sway back posture is the most common stabilization strategy used by clients with thoracic outlet syndrome. When the pelvis is tucked down and in posterior pelvic tilt, or you could say lumbosacral flexion, uh, it causes a shift in the body's gravitational points so that the mid back hyperextends and the shoulders and the head comes forward. It's going to give you that like kyphotic posture, you know, like that rounding of the upper back and all that. It's almost impossible for a client to change their head and shoulder postural habits without addressing the root cause of it all, which is the pelvis tucking and thoracic lumbar hinge. Um, in regards with this, um, who knows if this is a root cause? Like in my belief, I feel like the root cause is something else, and I might make a video on it. But um, and I kind of really saw this. It's just another like it's something to do with dental occlusion. But anyways, um. It's still very important to address this issue because, like, see, if you have, your hip alignment is wrong, most likely the way you walk and the way you're going to move is going to be all wrong, too. So, you know, and the base of our bodies is, is and, you know, it's technically in our feet, but it's, our feet also is control, or you could say our hips also control our feet as well. You know, that's like our driving force and everything, like walking and running, you know, sports, anything physical, you know. A lot of our power comes from our hips um so yeah if you know if your hip alignment is wrong then you know you could say everything else is going to go out of whack too the pelvic tucking and forward head posture may cause breathing dysfunction as it causes the gripping of the abdominal muscles uh the abdominal muscles making it hard to breathe diaphragmatically and it depresses the clavicle uh so this is in relation to uh, the clenching and you can say abdominal bracing that people have and uh, who, ha who have sway leg posture 
and thoracic outlet syndrome. If you want to know more about that, um, I will also make another video about it in regards to this series. But you could also look at my channel. I already made a couple videos about it. Uh, just look up muscle clenching, abdominal gripping, or abdominal uh, bracing. Um, but anyway, essentially what you're doing is just you're like tightening your, your abs. And you doing that is also making you making your butt tuck in too. And there could be a lot of reasons why. Most of it is because, um, from what I learned, most of it is really just you, like your anxiety. You know, you're like stressed out all the time or something traumatic happened and you just never got out of that. Uh, that state of mind or whatever, but it could also be, um, you know, just not knowing how to set in posture, bad posture, bad breathing mechanics. Um, and then, result of this, this will cause, I'll, I'll even explain this later on, but this will cause you to um, have the, lo the muscles of the lower back, the erector spinae, motifidus, um, or auto sorts, uh, the lumbar sacral erectors, they're all going to be atrophy and um, that's very detrimental because uh, they're supposed to be slightly active in passion and I'll explain this more in, in a second. Uh, many patients feel that they that they overarch the lower back already but are in fact just hinging backward on the middle back the, the thoracolumbar lumbar junction. Uh, if the pelvis and butt points downward but is hanging backward on the mid spine this looks like the hips are shifted forward and the thorax back. It creates the illusion of lumbar lordosis, ATV. So a lot of things I hear um, with people who actually back posture too, um, is that uh, they also think they have ATV, they have both. You know, they took their pelvis in, but they also have ATP. It's all the same thing. It looks like it's ATV, but it's not. It's still you tugging in your butt. The thing is though, you literally just have your hips shifted forward and your thoracic spine, this area right here, is hanging backwards. And uh, that's not the way it's supposed to look. Technically, your thoracic spine is supposed to be anterior, supposed to be more forward, and then your butt is literally supposed to be behind you. You know, like it's like literally driving you. You know, so, um, so yeah, um, I, and I actually I wanted to include this too because I know that feeling. Like for a long time, I thought I had ATP, but I'm gonna make another video on this too. ATP is a myth. It's a miss. I kind of go into it here, but I'm going to make another deep, uh, a deeper, I guess you say, analysis of the article I read that <laughs> kind of confirms all that, that maybe, you know, made that discovery and all that. So, yeah, uh, ATP is a myth because you're supposed to have your back arch. You know why? Because when your back is arch, you're activating the, the, the muscles of the lower back that are supposed to help extend your spine. For that reason. Alright, so, okay, in a balanced pelvis alignment, the ACS and the pubis should be vertically aligned. Now, if you don't know what the ACS and the pubis is, basically the ACS is the anterior superior iliac spine. This is, um, so you know how your hips, they have, have you seen like, uh, you know, anatomy, the, ana the bones of the hips? Um, there's like, there's like these ridges, right? There's like that little bowl or whatever. And then there's these ridges on top of the hips. It's literally just indicating the top ridges, the front top ridges. You know, these parts right here. And then the pubis, that's basically, you, it's basically the region um, where your genitals are at. You know, if you're a man or a woman, I'm not going to say, you know, penis, but I don't know if there's a girl watching this shit too. I mean, there's a girl watching this, my Excuse me for the language, but uh, I don't know if there's a girl watching this too, so I'm going to say like, <laughs> you know, vagina or whatever, but it's just essentially your genitals. Whatever your genitals are, it's, it's like they kind of hang around there, whatever. The pubis is, is like literally like there as well. All right, so, uh, um, so yeah, those two should be aligned. Now, in posterior pelvic toe, the pubis will be anterior in front of the ACS. So it's kind of like, so when you're taking your pelvis, you probably notice that it looks like your, your genesis are kind of sticking out more, and it shouldn't be like that. Uh, so to fix it, pull the pelvis backing up so that the butt points out and up and not down. Do so until the ACS and the pub and pubis are in vertical alignment. 
Um, I'm going to say this. So when the pelvis is aligned properly, the lower back extensors should also be properly active in posture. If they aren't, place uh, pubis slightly more posterior to the ACS, which is just saying that you should kind of just really arch your back more, basically. That's basically what it's saying. So if you want to fix the sweat back posture, it starts set to the point where, like, make sure you know. So you can see me. See, I brought it real quick. Literally saying like until you feel like your your body is literally out and it's up pointing upward as much as you can, and then try to also actually feel your lumbar, your lower back. Like don't you know overdo it. Like ah, you know, like you're doing a lower back exercise. Just make sure it's like active. You know, you can like engage it. It should be slightly engaged in pressure. Uh, And uh, yeah, um, I hope that video helps. Um, so yeah, uh, you know, treating Sampitrite syndrome is a, it's a long journey. And I'm, I'm still making more videos about this series because there's just so much to talk about. Uh, you know, it's not going to be a uh, overnight fix. <laughs> you know, it's not going to be, there's, gonna be no, there's, no, there's not going to be no, uh, you, can, you can call it like one exercise fix either it's literally just takes a lot of work in regards to knowing how to move your body how to use your body and also just i guess you say kind of a, just accepting who you are and you know addressing everything else in your life too uh, and i mean that from like uh emotional mental even spiritual i uh, say to mind uh, so um uh, like I said before, you know, you want you want more help, or you want help, uh, you want some advice, you know, you need you want to ask me a few questions about anything in regards to this topic, uh, you know, please feel free to email me or leave a comment in the in comment section below. Uh, don't forget to like, comment the video, share it if you want to, and don't forget to su so subscribe to the channel. Uh, thank you for tuning in, and this is Fast Life.